Welcome to Countdown to Daytona. Dan Lucas here at Daytona International Speedway. It's Daytona 500 Media Day. So you know how these media days work at Super Bowls and, and big events like that? Well, these things kind of are crazy. There's a ton, ton of journalists here broadcasters, TV reporters here, and us. We are here as well, and of course, a ton of great Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers. And we're going to get to sit down with a few of them here over the next hour. So if you're watching us or if you don't know or people don't know about us, tell them. Uh, tune in. This is good stuff. And if you want to participate in the show, ask some questions for our guests, feel free at uh, hashtag countdown to Daytona. Put that in your question. Uh, we'll pick that up and we'll try and get it to uh, our guests here when they pop up. Uh, we just had uh, on our Facebook pre-show Eric Amarola, uh, driver from Stuart Haas Racing. So uh, who's going to come down here? Ah, they're right over here over my shoulder. So we'll bring them in as they come in one at a time. So uh, we're here for the next hour. J.B. Buno uh, will be uh, here as well to uh, help us get through the hour with uh, some interesting questions for some of the top drivers uh, in the world. And one of the guys that uh, we should get ready to meet here soon uh, is, is, well, Kirk Bush is lingering here near. Hopefully we get to talk to him shortly because he's a, a Daytona 500 champion, just changed teams. So he's got an interesting, uh, he's in an interesting transition yeah, right Dan, now I mean, late we, in his career. We have a lot of drivers in here right now. I mean, the scene here, let's go to it one more time because the scene here is absolutely there it is. electric. That's Take Kurt right here. there. There he is. Kurt Bush uh, taking some questions from the media. There's hundreds of members of the press here, Dan. It's uh, It's been pretty wild, and they're all doing it right here in front of the, the big trophy, the trophy for the Daytona 500. That's the, it, that is the Harley J. Earl trophy, and it is enormous. It's so big that they get a little miniature version of the Harley J. Earl to take with them. So when you go into these shops, uh, wherever they're located, I went. To, I saw a couple of them uh, last month up in North Carolina. They, you know, have them on display uh, in the lobbies. It's kind of cool stuff. But yeah, that's a big trophy. And, and when you go through the trophies in sports that you want to win, that's one of. Them. In this sport, it is the trophy to win. So and Kurt Busch, he is a Harley J. Earl Trophy winner. So a good guy to talk to, and he's getting ready to sit down with us here. This is going to be good. I mean, we start off our first guest of the day. I mean, give us a Daytona 500 champion, will you? Uh, <laughs> so, Kurt, Thank well, you. thanks for joining good us. I remember, uh, you know, it wasn't. It was just a couple of years ago, and uh, you were. It was a big moment for you because it was kind of a uh, not not a redemption, but you, you, you had turned everything around professionally, personally, and this kind of was the icing on the cake. And now that it's been a couple of years, how do you look back at that moment? Uh, it was an unbelievable win to have it as Monster Energy's first race, too, as the entitlement yeah. sponsor. All the executives were here, uh, all of the, the different uh, people from behind the scenes that put it together, and the, and the people that believed in me as well. Uh, it was great to deliver a win like that for them, and the, the timing of it uh, was surreal when I look back on everything. And so it's great to have that and to go along with a championship I feel like those are two cool uh, bookends yeah. that I have in my career. <laughs> now, if I recall that race, last year's race, there was there was wrecks everywhere. The year before, you got to the end, people were running out of fuel. Am I correct on that? There was a couple of. Were you concerned about that yourself? Because you saw guys dropping in front of you, and you thought, "Uh oh, am I going to get to the line here?" <laughs> yeah, it was a, a long run at the end. I think we could at that time go about. 49 laps on fuel mm -hmm. and the final run was 51 laps and so we were all trying to save gas because pitting for the two laps wouldn't make any sense and right. so yeah a lot of guys were struggling with the fuel mileage we had just enough we had a little <laughs> bit of lady luck that helped us and I made a move on the outside to pass Larson and was able to hold off the guys from behind I came in last year I went into the museum to check out the car and it still had that chunk of turf on it. <laughs> I, I said, you guys couldn't spray it every day, keep it alive. They I mean, tried at first, <laughs> but yeah. You know, when I was doing my, my celebration and spinning out, doing donuts and things, I <laughs> tore up some of the grass and... Yeah, it landed on the hood. So, yeah, they just left it there. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be authentic, for sure. Uh, talk about the new team and, and, the, and the new setup for you this year. And, and, and not necessarily a new outlook. It's the same goals for you. But how does this look for you, 2019? You know, everything's great with the team, and we're full throttle. I mean, just, just going after it with as much intensity and as much focus as we can. Uh, I signed a one-year deal not knowing where Ganassi was looking to go, myself, Monster Energy. And so... 
that mentality though of not knowing what's going to bring what's going to happen in 2020 that's going to force us to go harder here in 2019 so i like it already being the veteran do, do the young guys try to hit you up or do they just watch kind of observe how does it work you know when you were a young guy what did you do did you look up to guys ask questions keep I, your mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> i should have kept my mouth shut more uh, i was a guy that asked a lot of questions um and you know the guys now the kids they seem a bit more reserved mm -hmm. and a little bit quieter and so there's not as many uh conversations i guess you could say between the, the young and the older right. guys and you know, they do have their good little click going, uh, and that's that's part of how they develop as drivers is they bounce ideas off each other, and it seems like uh, it's the old versus the young. So. <laughs> well, they're talented for sure, but uh, your win here uh, a couple of years ago showed that experience matters, uh, especially oh, on this track. Uh, J.B. Buno is uh, with us, and uh, I, I, always, I like want to soften you up for the real hard questions. And, uh, JB, what do you got here for Kurt? Hey, Kurt, what's going on? So we got some off-the-track questions. Do you want, do you want one uh, Speed Racer related or Die Hard related? He's old enough to remember Speed Racer, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go Speed Racer, go, right? See, the young yeah. guys can't do that. It, yeah. They, yeah, they don't know that? Oh, come <laughs> on. Yes. All right, if you could have one enhancement from Speed Racer's Mach 5, the car, what would it be? Oh, man. Uh, anything that would make the car go faster, but it never <laughs> seems to good. get any damage. Right? The car never gets damaged. No, you're so right. I, I think... Uh, that car it's, is always in pristine shape. Yes. Right? That's something I'd love. It'll, I love it'll the, like fall down a canyon and roll down and tumble a bunch of times. And, and it comes out looking... Go. Yeah. You know, if they remade that show today, do you think Hollywood could make it where there is a little damage and, they, you know, make our hero survive and save the day? I think you would because every show nowadays has to have that drama of right. what's good, what's bad. And yeah. then, yeah, you get the car back to the garage. Just like you, you have uh, you know your your tow truck back with the Dukes of Hazard boys, right? You know, exactly. Cooter's Garage, so <laughs> that would help with uh, having the damage, and then you got to get it fixed up by your boy. Well, those guys would jump. They would jump over a creek, and you would see the car bottom out, and then in the next edit. It's like like it already came out of the garage. It's amazing how good that car. I mean, it was like a commercial for a Dodge Charger <laughs> all along. What else you got, JB? Anything? We are reminding people that you can use the countdown to Daytona hashtag if you want to join in on the conversation and ask questions to drivers. Um, and we're waiting for those questions to come in. Okay. Well, Kurt, this has been uh, good stuff, man. I really appreciate your time. And, yeah. uh, like I said, I, I, one of the neat things, uh, you know, you see a lot in this uh, sport, and I think a lot of people like myself, and I was here for that win. Uh, when you pulled into victory lane, you know, it, it, you feel good, you know, when good people get in there. It's like a, it's, it's a moment that even if you're not a diehard race fan, you saw that, you knew the story. It felt good to see. I mean, oh, thank you. That's just good stuff. And I uh, wish you the best tomorrow night uh, in the qualifiers and also this weekend. You got it. Hopefully it happens again, you know, the, the new <laughs> team and new vibe and just the energy all around us. So hopefully right. that, that come true again. Thank Kurt you. Bush, good, good stuff. Right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Enjoy media day. They all, they, all, they all do, JB. They love the, the, the media day. Uh, media day. I mean, look at just, just the atmosphere here is crazy. So now the process goes. He gets ushered on to his. There he goes. He's off to talk to the. Podium. He's off to talk to the TVs. And, and we're bringing in our next guest, everybody. Take a look. Mr. Harvey, you drink your golf clubs? I did. My golf clubs are always on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly a golf day here for. Uh, you know, a series champion here, Kevin Harvick, uh, who's, uh, I mean, this is, last year what you were able to accomplish, uh, but you didn't get the championship. I mean, where, where are you on coming into the new season after the great year that you had? Well, I just had the best year of my career, so it's, it's, it's um, you know, you're definitely not down. So uh, with, with the way that our format is, coming down to one race and, and you know, I don't. I don't think that that uh, dictates the you know the results that you have during the season. And, and the way that uh, we ran last year was career year for me and, and most everybody on the team. So to to win um, you know eight points races in the All Star race, um, you know, was was something that you you can't complain about, and, and we aren't going to. When the playoff format first started, and you saw, okay, I don't have to, you know, because we, you, you, we get to the point where guys like yourself would be so far ahead that it's almost over weeks out. So they wanted to create this competitive scenario to the end, as you, as you stated. 
What were you, what did you think of it back then, and then what were your thoughts about it coming at the end of last season? Yeah, as a traditionalist, you know, I don't I don't think that you really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think as as you look at the you know where the sport is now and and where the playoff system is now, um, it's very exciting and, and been a very good thing for our sport as as we've gone through the as we've gone through the last few years. So. You know, we there needs to be excitement. It's much like uh, other sports, and and um, you know, I think it, it can be a little bit complicated for the for right. the fans to follow because you know when you when you only have four guys left in the championship and you have all the cars on the right. racetrack to the common fan, it's it's hard to explain, uh, especially when you add in all the stage points and the stage racing right. and everything. So, you know, the only thing that I can say that that um, that you hear a lot is I just don't understand it. But I think the guys uh, that are racing it on a week to week basis. Love the fact that we have stage points and, and things to race for because it, it you know it, it really makes you go after those those portions of the race and and you know it's very hard to get to that final four and, and have those um, last ten weeks or really the whole season put together enough to where you can give yourself a chance to even race for a championship. So it's um, it's very exciting. I think it, I think our, our 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 sport has done a good job in adding in some of those traditional elements of points racing. Um, along with um, you know enticing you to, to race um, you know during the stages, so it's been um, it's been interesting to see it develop. But I think we're we're at a good spot for the championship. The only thing I only thing I wish was a little different was we rotated that championship race to to different racetracks. I think mm-hmm. that would really um, you know add another element to it instead of going to one track the same track every year. I kind of like well it's all, in time of year though you, you kind of want to be in Florida at least in that area that time. Yeah. Well you know <laughs> bottom line is our season needs to end earlier. Yeah. Um, you know you need to you need to end the season in October and, and put yourself in a position to where you can move that championship race and really all the playoff races around to where they can be at different tracks uh, or a little earlier into the end of the year. How many times, or if I if I said, let me reach back up, if I gave you a dollar for every time you heard a racing package uh, today, the new racing package, how, how rich would you be right now? It's the it's one of the hot topics here, the new rules and, and how it's going to alter the sport this year. Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, I've heard it a couple times. I would definitely wouldn't be rich, but I'd have four or five dollars yeah, in my pocket. Five bucks in your yeah. pocket, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't been here that long, though. So <laughs> You'll be rich, trust yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, this this weekend is really no different than, than the package uh, that we've been racing on the super mm-hmm. speedways when we go to Talladega that it'll be a drastic change um, we really don't know how to react to the, the rules package because we've never raced it um, you know we had it on the racetrack at all at the all-star race with half the cars right um, and you know with less horsepower and there's there's been a tremendous amount of change um, you know since we've run at all-star race so it'll be it'll be interesting to see um, how we race when we get to Atlanta next week and, and the style of race and um, you know the whose thought processes are right because right now we really have no clue so coming to the Daytona 500 your Daytona 500 champion uh, everybody comes here they want to win it some guys can go I'm going to win today or whatever your, your your mindset is what's the hard part in there in Daytona you hear people say first you got to get to the finish line yeah and then you got to figure out where you are in yeah the hardest part is just getting to the finish <laughs> um, you know that, that 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 really is truly the the, the part that is the, the hardest part to do um, is not wrecked during the day just because you know you see so many people that, that want to win this race the the risk uh, versus reward is always more on the risk side here uh, because of the magnitude of the prize uh, and that being the, the Daytona 500 so uh, this is a race uh, within in the race season that kind of stands on its own because there's there's nothing like winning the Daytona 500 and, and as you hear that um, you know from guys who have won it uh, and experienced it they can relate um, but until you until you have experience, you know you look at it and say, well, it's, there's a lot going on here. But <laughs> when you win the race, there's even more going on, and, and it can make your whole year uh, just by winning this this one race. That is excellent stuff. Uh, before you're done here, I want JB uh, to step in here because uh, those are the easy questions. Here comes the hard question. JB, go ahead. All right, <laughs> Die Hard. You like Die Hard? Die Hard. It's been a while. I don't watch many movies. Okay, okay. He's, he's a Bruce Willis guy. Uh, <laughs> a Christmas a, movie? Do you think it's a Christmas movie? Die Hard is is not a Christmas movie. Oh, okay, okay. That, that, Wrong that, answer. Because Bruce Willis said may it have, wasn't a Christmas movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, it may he, have come out around Christmas and had some Christmas scenes in it, but it's not a Christmas movie. Okay, Kevin Harvick, everybody. With the authoritative statement, you people hard leave me speechless, and I, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. For your time, yeah, man. Good no luck problem. This Thank you guys. <laughs> uh, that's Kevin Harvick joining us there. He, he won uh, eight races last year. JB uh, did not win the championship, and, and there's two drivers, uh, Harvick, 
also Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch had seven wins in 2018, yet Joey Logano won the series championship, and that was done uh, really in the last race of the season. Logano, the winner, and uh, passed those guys in points. It's, it's what the playoffs are meant to do. They're meant to create that late-season drama, and Logano yep. came in and pulled out a win. And the week before, uh, Logano raced poorly. So he, I, I don't know what the math was specifically, but he needed to pretty much win to, to have a shot at the championship, and he did it. But uh, put yourself in Kevin Harvick's shoes uh, going through that season, a tremendous year, a career year, as he mentioned it, and he is a former series champion right. coming up a tad short, so you know he's hungry for 2019. You definitely get the sense in his interview that he's really, really focused on, on finishing it this year. I mean, what an incredible first two-thirds of the season, and then and then – all it needs really is the finishing touches, so he could be a big name to watch. Watch out for the number four car uh, this season, everybody, especially coming up on Sunday in the Daytona 500, yeah. because it could be it could be a big year for Kevin Harvick if, if his his dreams come to fruition, so to speak. And, yeah, and, a, and a Stuart Haas driver, and a, that's a uh, a team that has veterans on it, and a, a young driver coming over, Daniel Suarez, uh, who took Kurt Busch's uh, place on the Stuart Haas's team. Um, yeah, there's expectations on him for sure. You know, I mean, I I didn't ask him about how they qualify they qualify well uh his team and that's one of the reasons he's always in a position uh, to come up with the wins he had a ton of top tens to go with those eight wins and uh so he is one when you say give me the dominant drivers going into the season kevin harvick's one of them yeah no, without question he's absolutely up there um, i'm sneaking a peek have... over my shoulder by the way see right. what we got going right, yeah, on over here let's kind of let's kind of show the uh the atmosphere here and kind of See, see uh, some of the drivers that we have in here as we're looking at some of the beautiful signage that we have here in the in the media day hall for the Daytona 500 here. It's absolutely beautiful um, the way that they kind of roll out the red carpet. Pun not intended. Actually, they literally <laughs> do roll out the red carpet it's here. The, it's the asphalt colored carpet this time. But uh, for everybody, for people who've never been part of this experience, uh, all of these drivers are just going from station to station to station to station, right. talking to different microphones and different people. Uh, it's really incredible to see, and it's really frantic. I mean, we're, we're trying to grab as many people as we can. Yeah, we're this trying is, to do uh, our thing. I'll tell you, this is, uh, th th I'll, I'll give you some of the names of the uh, rotation uh, coming here towards us, because there's a list, but they're not necessarily coming in order. Kevin Harvick was down the uh, list a little bit, but uh, potential guys we're going to hear from here, possibly Kyle Busch. That would be a great one. I, I mentioned he was just in the same boat as uh, Harvick. Uh, a little bit later, Chase Elliott, who had a oh, great sure. uh, uh, qualifying run the other day. Daniel Suarez, I mentioned him as a young driver, uh, coming on board for Stuart Haas. Jimmy Johnson, uh, the leader in all-time uh, series championships. So we got some names here uh, that could be pretty cool I, to I, chat with. I actually really want to, I know it sounds obscure, I want to hear from Corey LaJoy only because he was over here earlier and he saw our setup here. Dan and what do you think it was cool? Oh, he you think it was cool? cool. He was like, he was like, oh man, I really want to be, I really want to be on uh, on the show. <laughs> so the number two, 32 car, everybody wants to be part of the show. So cool. maybe we can track down. I actually, I think Corey is right down there speaking uh, in front of the trophy. But um, oh, we're here having we go. Our, our next guest, everybody, coming on down. How about this guy? I mean, it, how'd you do how's the other day in qualifying? There, you oh, man. we did okay. You did. <laughs> <laughs> we did all right. This is William Byron, the uh, pole sitter. Uh, part of the Hendrick uh, Motorsports. We were debating this yesterday. Do we call it dynasty or do we call it empire? What, what do we call it? Oh, man. It? I don't know. Hopefully we can keep it going, but uh, <laughs> dynasty would be a good word. Um, you it's, know, it's just, whatever Jimmy says. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's, he's the one that's won seven of these. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still looking to try to make a name in Hendrick Motorsports, and I think our team's looking forward to many more wins to come what is the dynamic like at Hendrick because you have the resources you have the backing you have the great teams that get you guys going here that showed in qualifying but it's all young guys and then the veteran Jimmy so yeah. how, how often do you guys lean on him do you lean on him at all yeah. uh, to kind of help you guys get your careers going no we do I mean we probably you know look at what we're doing as a group uh, together to, to lean on each other um, I, I it comes from from really everybody it's a team effort um you know we're we're at this level so we we kind of you know try to lean on all, all of each other and, and try to learn something from it that's the uh, lap you ran the other day were, were you aware that all the cars were running that well i forget the order was jimmy for no chase 
then Jimmy, yeah. then you, yeah. and then Alex. So you had you still had to sit through Alex. But after yeah. your lap, were you thinking, oh, no, Alex might get this? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> sure, I, you know, Chase, I wasn't sure if Chase was going to have a better lap or Jimmy was going to have a better lap. Um, so we were very fortunate to to do the way we did or do as well as we did. So you never know. I mean, it's it's part of the you know the process. But to have four teammates like that that close is something uh, pretty special. So it, for those who, who didn't catch the, the front row qualifying on Sunday, Hendrick Motorsports took the top four spots. Now, really what matters are the top two, uh, which was uh, our young man here, William Byron and Alex Bowman as well. Alex Bowman, by the way, was last year's pole sitter. So they know what they're doing there at Hendrick. But uh, now you, you're setting up the, the Thursday night dual races, and yeah. you guys are in prime position to, to at least get good starting spots for your other two teammates yeah I mean it's a great opportunity for all of us uh, you know we we have some things to accomplish in the duel try to you know learn a little something and uh, and see what we can do so it's gonna be fun I'm, I'm looking forward to it all right JB uh, I wonder if you have anything for uh, William here now we we had an older driver here William he was a speed racer guy you're too young to know speed <laughs> racer so JB's not gonna go speed what do you got there for me, All Jersey? right, I'm not going to go speed racer. This is, this is more of a softball. We're going to give a softball question to William here. Okay. All right. If you could snack on your dream food while stuck under caution, what would that dream food be and why? Dream food. Wow. wow. Keep in mind you got giant M&M's bars over next Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, probably like uh, man. Probably ice cream, but that's going to melt super fast. Yeah. So like, gonna work. It gets hot in the vehicle, oh, yeah. doesn't it? It's going to go down quick. <laughs> go over well. Ice cream be through one of those me. little tubes in the helmet. Yeah, that would be all over me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. All right. Uh, your pole sitter for the uh, 2019 Daytona 500, William Byron, the, the 24 car. And, and uh, we wish yeah. you all the best. Thank you, guys. Appreciate weekend. it. Nice Have to a good you. week. Thank you. That's great. Uh, you know, he's uh, – we, we, a couple of years ago we, we brought in a group of drivers, uh, JB, Called them the young guns. Well, now the young guns are like the, the middle-aged guns. There's younger guns behind them. And, and William Byron is the second, I believe he's the second youngest pole winner uh, in the Daytona 500. He's the youngest guy on this Hendrick team. Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson, the veteran, uh, William Byron, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott. Those are the top four guys on that team. It, it's an amazing team. And uh, uh, it's going to be a team that's reckoned with again. Uh, here if, in 2019. If you're, if you're watching everybody, if you want to feel old for a second, uh, <laughs> William, William there was born in 1997. 1997. So, uh, Dan, does that make you feel a little old? Well, I can it, tell you, oh, I mean, man. 1997, I, I think I was working NASCAR races in 1997. <laughs> that, right. it, it's, yes. <laughs> and I know Speed Racer. So, that, right. yeah, yeah that's, 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 that, that qualifies me <laughs> as being uh, old, on the older side. But, uh, no, the, the, uh, just go, it also goes to show you, A, uh, he could drive a race car, can handle a race car, but uh, like I, he had mentioned, the team behind him and the resources that Hendrick's willing to put in uh, to getting these guys going, that's why Hendrick Motorsports uh, is, is arguably the team to beat in this sport. Yeah, uh, let's take a look here at the scene, everybody. Kind of show you what's going on here. Uh, obviously, this is a so this is the afternoon hour, right, Dan? So this is when things yeah are they really break this up. Starting it, this, to rev up. This thing gets going at eight in the morning. And it's going to go all the way till till late afternoon, and and I like the setup because uh, the drivers keep coming, and uh, you know they, it's not too much of their time. I don't think it is. Corey might disagree with me. Oh, uh, <laughs> we got Corey, everybody. Corey <laughs> has arrived. It is. Corey LaJoy is here. Uh, I was just saying how the drivers, you know, the thing starts at 8 in the morning. Are you a morning session guy or an afternoon session guy? Well, I'm sitting here talking to you at 1.30, so I'm an afternoon guy. You love the afternoon. Guy. Okay, fine. Okay. You couldn't get 18 in this morning, though, my man. It was raining out there. It was. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, they asked me <laughs> if I want to do the morning or afternoon, and I always opt to uh, sleep in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Corey, what's up? Uh, you're part of a generation, you know, many generations now of LaJoy's in this sport. Yeah. So I guess you're one of those guys that you didn't have to really blaze a trail. But was the trail, did you ha did you have the option to not be on the trail or did oh, you yeah. get into it on your own? Well, and, and it's funny that that perception, like since my dad was a two-time Xfinity Series champion, they think that this was just this easy path. It wasn't. There was a time where I was crew chief in k and cars just to pay the bills. And, uh, and because I had no sponsorship to get jump in a car. If it wasn't for a couple lucky breaks and a good sponsor to get me back in the fold, I wouldn't be here today. Like it's, it's probably been the opposite of a, of a trail because I was off blazing on another trail to be a crew chief, and it's just worked out to where 
I'm back in the fold driving. So my grandpa drove modifieds, and he was like the one track, not the one track jack, but he was a, a northeastern guy, won a lot of races and championships. Dad obviously had a, a stellar career in the Xfinity Series, and he, we were, me and my brother were here at the time of, or I say here, we were probably seven and eight mm-hmm. or seven and ten uh, when Dad was at the prime of his career. Um, so with that being said, he got the opportunity to go cup racing and never really wanted to commit to a full-time deal because he wanted to hang out with us at, at home on Sunday. And the, the, the time commitment on a cup series is, is way more than the Xfinity series or than Bush series. So uh, right now I'm, I'm carrying the LaJoy flag in the cup series much more than anybody else has, and that's, it's certainly cool. Uh, I think that I just surpassed my dad in, in career starts. Uh, I don't know, a couple, maybe 50 <laughs> or so. So that's a pretty cool stat. So the secret budding crew chief uh, is driving. What Now, when you're in the ch- in the seat there behind the wheel, you're supposed to follow instructions. Uh, but do you put your crew chief hat on at all sometimes on the track, or do you, are you yeah. very... No, you, I you're... think that's one of my uh, one of my advantages on some, that I, that I know how to make the car better uh, in a... In shorter amount of time right like if 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 i need some right rear spring and i need a little bit of this and that like i knew how to get to where i need to be very quick as opposed to beating around the bush like some of these guys who don't really know mechanically how a race car works all right Corey, we wish you the best qualifying races yeah thanks get it going my man good luck to you Corey LaJoy, join us and we're going to slide right in with martin truex jr how you doing, how you doing man? man congratulations on the uh the new the new ride thank you here in 2019 yeah, uh, man. i i gotta tell you uh I, I don't. I haven't recalled any similar story in sports, uh, where somebody who's at, really basically at the top of his game, having to deal with with questions of, am I have a job? Yeah. Next year, I mean, I mean, take me through that weird time. You had four wins for fans who did oh, four wins, right, in 2018, and you you knew in the background, okay, future of the teams here. I got to look. For, for my own future where were you and through all of this yeah i mean i, I for, unfortunately i've dealt with this stuff for you know throughout my career a few times and so i was kind of in a good place as far as um you know in this sport if you're at the top of your game your chances and your odds are as about as good as they can be <laughs> yeah, exactly and I, I was kind of leaning on that and figuring hey I, i'm going to be okay um and fortunately you know um being part of the toyota camp over the years the loyalty that that they've showed and that i've showed them as well um that kind of put me in a good position uh and they really took a lot of the weight off my shoulders saying hey you know you're a champ you're our latest champion you're you know you're top of your game you're winning races you're right. going to challenge for a championship again this year don't sweat it we're going to make sure you know try to do things and and put something together for you so <laughs> had that all going on and trying to focus on winning the championship which we came really close on but uh, I've been through some adversity, and I've learned how to deal with it. I was I was going to say, I mean, do you feel like you come into a situation where the resources are in place? I mean, you're going to contend anyways. I don't care who you're driving so. for. <laughs> However, you now have some resources behind you uh, to really make a push. I mean, how good do you feel? I feel great. Um, honestly, I'm fired up. I think our team is too, and I feel like we have a great team assembled uh, on the 19 car. Uh, obviously, you know, Joe Gibbs Racing, their, their credentials speak for themselves, championships, race wins. I mean, you, you think of a, you know, one of the top teams in the sport, you automatically think of them. So to be, to be aligned on a huge team like that has been fun. Um, it, it's kind of the first time for me. I've, I've been yeah. on somewhat big teams before, but not like this. You know, no, no big-time championship-winning teams until I've won a championship at Furniture Row. So um, it's been really cool so far. Things have went well. I feel like transition's been smooth. Um, I feel right at home and uh, I'm ready to hit the racetrack. How hard is it to win here? Clearly, for me, it's very, very. <laughs> Sometimes hard. it's like this. Was it that? Was it that um, far? Yeah, I don't know I if mean, it was it that was, far. Or you know, no, yeah, yeah. Eight or ten inches <laughs> in, in 2016, and you know, second in July last year. Yep. It's just been a place for me that hasn't been kind, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I won a Bush Series race here back in oh, I guess it was oh five. Right. Um, but restrictor plate racing in general for me in the Cup Series has been tough. Um, I've had a lot of – I've seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time all the time, <laughs> which is tough to deal with. But uh, at the same time, I do enjoy it, and it's a different, unique challenge. And uh, this race is so big. Everybody wants to win it. I mean, it's a Daytona 500. So I'm excited and uh, just do what we can. You know, we've been close. Hopefully we can get it done this week. All right, let's go right place, right time for you because JB's here with, with one quick question for you, Martin. Yeah, Martin. 
Okay, so we're, we're gonna uh, some Talladega Nights flair. You ready? Ready? For I'm some ready. Fun, for some fun for all everybody, everybody watching online, everybody watching online. All right. If Ricky Bobby was racing this season in NASCAR, <laughs> would Martin Truex Jr. be a friend or a mortal enemy? Oh. Ooh. I would probably clearly he's, be an enemy because he doesn't like he doesn't like to finish second. Neither do I. <laughs> So I'm guessing we'd be enemies. Right answer. Correct answer. <laughs> I think that that's a pretty easy question to answer. Ricky Bobby would, would have no friends. He'd yeah. have no friends. So exactly. <laughs> Mark Shrex, you're a friend of Countdown to Daytona. Nice. Thanks, Ricky Bobby. Thanks for your Pre time. Yeah. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Uh, Eric Jones is going to join us here, JB. And uh, I've been waiting to, to chat with Eric because uh, – you had your uh, it slides right in. See, this is how this works, guys. This is how this works. It's, just, it's like a conveyor belt. How cool yeah, is this? Coming that, in here, every exactly. Time yeah, that we're, exactly. Every minute we have a new NASCAR face. I mean, if you us saw here, the setup right. here, you, he has obligations all over this room, but we, they just slide them right in here. This is the convenient. It's Eric, everywhere to go. <laughs> exactly. You won a race here uh, at Daytona, not the 500, but you know how to win here, and that's. 90% of the battle what what is the what are your what's your Daytona confidence now well it's it's much higher than it was you know i think um, i always felt good about racing here and always enjoyed racing here just never really had, had uh, never really had gotten that win and uh, you know to finally knock it out uh, get it done was uh, man it was uh, it was a huge moment one i won't forget uh, anytime soon so it was a, definitely a fun day and it made me feel way more confident going into the 500 this year Bringing uh, Martin to the mix, Martin Truex, uh, how cool is that, a guy who's a proven winner? You're now around a number of guys who have won championships, Daytona 500s, big races. I don't know how often you guys kind of tap into, not resources, but just little things here and there. You've got some of the best around you. What can you soak in from that? A lot. You know, I mean, uh, I've got three guys on my team that have won, uh, you know, well over 20 races apiece in NASCAR, and that's that's pretty neat to see. There's not many other teams like that, so it's uh, it's been fun to see uh, see Martin come in and see Cole come in um, and be able to ask those guys questions. It's, it's huge for a young guy like me. You know, it's uh, my third year in the Cup Series, so I'm still learning plenty every year and every race, but, uh, you know, it's nice to have three veteran guys there that I'm able to lean on and, and just, you know, peel any kind of information I need out of. They have so much experience at this level. Uh, there's a lot they can share. Uh, really better myself along the way. All right, uh, JB, Eric Jones uh, in the hot seat here. This is a, He has a Daytona track win. He won the July race here last year, trying to win the Daytona 500. So there's no way possible you can rattle this young man but you're going to attempt to do that right now i'm just i'm just curious for, for, for eric how, how are we on um, jb so if you weren't a nascar driver what do you think you'd be oh, any profession in the world give it to me i would have uh i would have been working in uh red parts that's what i did when i was a kid okay give me, give me one okay what if it wasn't cars no cars no cars oh, you're no not cars. allowed to work in cars give me something off wow. beat um that's tough. Wow, I never, uh, I never got past that. You know, I was always, uh, <laughs> that's cars too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everything is cars with these guys. Yeah, I know. My favorite. You know, I was gonna say like. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't auto detailing, was it? No, no. Like I loved. Uh, actually, I took a drafting class in high school. Oh yeah. And I loved that, but that was kind of cars too. You know, drawing. So you're gonna and engineer stuff. the next uh, yeah. wave of cars for yeah. this? Because what yeah. you're saying, basically. Yeah, so it's cars again. Nice. So, he so, stumped you, JB. Yeah. So okay. for number 20, it's just cars, 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 and yeah. more cars. That's right. Yeah. If you were to make a movie, it would probably be cars. You'd yeah, probably exactly. Just make the cars Absolutely. Movie for Absolutely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Eric, good stuff, my man. Yeah, uh, have fun today. Thank Do the best you can. Everybody's asking the tough questions, but we appreciate your yeah, time for thanks, sure. Guys. Eric Jones joining us here, a uh, young man from Joe Gibbs Racing who's uh, got a couple of really good uh, uh, drivers to follow and Kyle Busch. Martin Truex Jr. Uh, that's th these big Joe Gibbs is a, is a big team, and uh, when you win, this is what you have. So we got another gentleman coming in here, Mr. Menard, Paul Menard, joining us here. And I'll tell ya, thanks for joining us. By yeah. the way, all right, thank you. Um, you were a, you were a, anything happened Sunday? Interesting to you? <laughs> went to Disney World. <laughs> you went to cool. Disney World. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Had a good time. Uh, you know, you were uh, really dominant uh, in in the clash uh, on Sunday. And result aside, I mean, yeah. is that set up different than the 500? Everybody's mentioning clash car versus our Daytona 500 car. What is the difference? Uh, we did we did have a little bit different setup, and um, <clears throat> you can be a little bit more aggressive in the clash. There's no points on the line, right? It's just uh, just going out trying to learn, be aggressive, and and uh, learn 
what to do, what not to do for uh, for the 500 um, and the duels. So we our setup was a little bit different. What I'm really happy about and proud about is um, how well we qualified on Sunday with the 500 car with some drivability built into it. We didn't go f- peer out on speed. We uh, we knew that the Hendrick camp was uh, really strong on, on pure speed, so we put a little adjustability in the race car to, to draft well. Um, we still qualified 11th and uh, with a car that I, I feel is going to race really well. And I thought it was it was neat. You get you were, get to the front, and you showed you can drive in the front. And I, were you soaking in data, taking notes at this, or, or I know you're you're being competitive. You're trying to win, but when you're in the lead in a race like that, that's not the 500. Yeah. What what can you analyze in that moment that will help you if you wind yeah. up in the front or near the front on Sunday? Uh, how to manage the lanes? Uh, we you know we didn't see a whole lot of, of lanes forming. You know, we basically got to the top and stayed there. Um, but there's times when you had to go back and forth a little bit. Um, I've got a new spotter this year, so Joey, Joey was giving me a lot of information that um, I hadn't heard before. Just you know, just, just a different spotter, different cadence, different uh, way he, he goes about talking and, and giving you information. So that was that was beneficial for uh, for us just to get a race under our belt. And uh, you know, the restarts were were very important to uh, right. obviously try to, to nail your restart, get in the line that you needed to get into. And um, I felt like we had pretty good restarts. The uh, last year's race, in other words, signature crashes, signature <coughs> moments. You wind up with a, a, a top. You're in the top ten, I believe, right? You're in, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're ninth. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you got to be there to finish there. What do you remember about last year's race? Yeah, definitely wanted that one back. Um, we had a restart late that um, <clears throat> I think it was behind the 37 car and came off turn two. I had to run. I went to the bottom. I went to the bottom, and I should have gone to the middle. Um, I <clears throat> kind of broke my momentum, so they, that shuffled us back, and then mm-hmm. uh, we couldn't get back forward. But I think we're running fifth or something. I could have could have possibly made a run through the middle to uh, to get further forward. Uh, so I missed out on one there. But um, yeah, I mean Daytona 500, anything can happen. It's always, uh, <laughs> always we've seen cars hit jet dryers before, so it's, it's always exciting. <laughs> cars, I do remember that. That was yeah. a long night. That was a long night. For a lot of folks. Do you like? Do you we're prefer all stuck the, on the back do, stretch. do you like the super speedways? <clears throat> uh, some guys, you know, they it's it's neat for the fans, but yeah. it's not really the racing you guys do. Yeah, it's not the racing the we do. It's not the racing that we grew up doing, or or what got us as race fans. Uh, you know, it's, it's it, but it is a part of what we do, um, and it's something that you you need to embrace. Uh, you don't necessarily have to enjoy it, but you you have to work your ass off to, to try to be good at it. All right, JB's here, and uh, he has some really a real tough question for you here. So JB, J- J- yeah, yeah, these, these, that was the warm up. Take a drink, Paul. Get ready. The, the tough questions, Paul. These, these are the, you know the really hard what, ones. Let my whistle here. I want to go back to. I want to <laughs> listen. I want to go back to the dream food question. All right, you're you're stuck under caution. You could have any food in the world, anything in the world, hand delivered to you. What I'm, is I'm looking uh, at is to see if there's a food on here. Yeah, right. Are we going back racing afterwards? Oh, that's an important question. That is an important. You're question. gonna re- let. Let's say you have to resume. Okay, you have, you have to, have, yeah. you have resume. to resume. You're under caution. You have to resume. Any food. So no Any lasagna. Food. And you have to resume. Yeah. That's. I, I eat these little shop blocks in my car. Those are perfect. Good. In- <laughs> What was it? The little shot blocks. They're like little gummy things. Oh, That's all okay. you need. Right okay. there. Wow. Right. So what if you weren't going what back happens to race? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, okay. now, what if, now, what if now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay. Um, a steak. Nice. Definitely a steak. Very uh, good. Rare. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I love beer after the race. That's like the only time I drink beers after a race. Just steak and it. a beer. Yep. That's it. What's, let's check in on the Menard, Carl. What's, what's going on? Steak and a beer. All right. Yeah. Good night. Right. <laughs> We're not going back. Right. It'd be kind of hard to, you know, you know, get that steak knife in there with yeah. the steering wheel in the way, but I'm sure exactly. you can make it work. I'm exactly. Sure Always carry a pocket knife. Uh, so there you go. All right. Well, Paul, thank you very much for your time today. This has been tremendous, and, and uh, let's hope your good good week, your good running here continues uh, tomorrow night. Just you. Running out front there, Paul Menard, who, try. Thank who you. Uh, had a good day Sunday, and an you know, unfortunate uh, finish there. Thank you, Paul. But uh, ready to go here in the Daytona 500. He finished in the top 10 last year, JB. So that that's not easy to do uh, here in Daytona. So uh, Paul Menard is, is a guy to watch. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what about Paul. If we were in a back alley fight, Dan, and I would want one of these drivers to be helping me out, I think it would be Paul, – Paul looks ready to – I don't know. He looks ready to, to, to help us out if need be. <laughs> <laughs> There's already a fight going on here uh, in, the, in the old countdown to Daytona. <laughs> uh, Brendan Gone joins us here. Oh, 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 watch I'll out just, for those. Watch out oh, for well, those. Well, you know, this is, it's expensive here. The, <laughs> the company will pay for it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are we pay doing today? The insurance uh, process. Uh, Brendan, this is, uh, you, got, you got a big night ahead of you. 
uh, tomorrow. You're going to try and get, uh, qualify to get into the 500. So in that position, what's the mindset for the team? Well, you know, for the mindset, we, we just have to put Sunday out of our mind. This is the first race in three years that we didn't come and be, were the fastest of the open cars. And we're a little bummed out about it because we, we made a mistake. And, and you know what? That's, that's the, the, the joy of sport is that, you know, it, it's never always perfect, and no matter how confident you get, something can always happen. So we made a mistake, and we're going to go to the duels. We know how good our Chevrolet is. We know how good our motor is. And we're just going to go, and, and you can't say we're going to go out there and try to win the race. We have to do what we need to do to make the race. So we're, we're the race within the race, so to speak, and we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on the people that we need to race, which are the 66 and the 27, and all we really have to do is stay in front of that 66 car. So that's our goal battle with him make sure that uh we're in front of him at the finish line and, and end our day for well from there all right now you ran both daytona races last year is that correct how many yep I've run, we, we we run all i run in cup series for the beard beard motorsports guys with the four restrictor plates that's all we do i'm just a retired old man now and uh <laughs> i come out of retirement for these four races a year and and enjoy the beard family they're great people the team is great and and they give me a great race car i mean every time we've led i think of the eight races i've done for them we've led like five or six of them we had a chance to win the daytona 500 last year with a lap and a half to go we were running fourth you know i mean it's just they give me my best shot in the in a cup car, and these races give me the best shot to win. What is it about the the, the big tracks that you like the best? Well, this is the great equalizer of our sport, the last great equalizer. You know, the, the restrictor plates are where you know the the, the have nots can keep up with the haves. And uh, uh, Mr. Beard, we are definitely a have not team, but you know, thankfully because because of old friendships and relationships you know richard childers takes helps helps take care of us a little bit and ecr the engine side yep. takes good care of me and mr beard makes it all available so he's the money he spends we try to make it be spent correctly we now are a two-car team um and i mean that as in we don't just have one car anymore we now have two <laughs> race cars so i have a backup for the first time ever in in two years with these folks and uh it, it's fantastic you know I, i'm i'm smiling happier than i've been in years and <laughs> and I, I love seeing all my old buddies and laughing they all look at me and go didn't you retire yet and i'm like yeah i'm just here to play you feel like it's a bit of a throwback the team you know back to the days of where you had to claw your way mm -hmm. go grab parts truly work on the car get it to the start line is that uh, kind of a, a a nod to the, to the history of the sport and yeah the, the beard family is definitely a throwback for what we're doing i mean it, it's not many teams really can do what they're doing anymore, and, and it's a nod to the owner and the crew chief, Darren, and the guys there that they are, they're able to do it. They're, they found the way to make it happen, and, you know, you get hooked up with the right people that, that help guide you in the right direction, and we've done that, and so it, uh, it works well. And like I said, I've, I've had a great time driving for these folks. I mean, we've in eight races, I think it's three or four top tens. You know, and, and hell, the year before I finished 11th, I ran out of gas coming out at the Sunoco <laughs> sign and lost a top 10 finish at the Daytona 500 by like six inches. So, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it, it's been so much fun and I just, I enjoy the hell out of racing again. And, and then I have, to, and also it gets me out of the office for two weeks. So anything to get me out of the office for two weeks, I will definitely be, gladly do. Anybody wants to get out of the office. That's right. For two weeks. I was handed a note, uh, oh, told that's you right. a college hoops guy back in the day. What are you about? Six, nine? What are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, six, nine. Oh yeah, there we go. Still got it. Wow, on. he's got the Hoyas. Um, the Georgetown Hoyas. Are you a Are you a John Thompson? I was I was Big John. Big John, you Big John. Thompson. I was with Big John. Wow, um, that's so we. Uh, yeah, I, I've, that's going back, man. No, nah, I've ninety three to ninety seven. <laughs> played football and basketball for the Hoyas, and matter of fact, we play Seton Hall tonight at eight thirty. So uh, he's I'll, not I'll, watching her or anything. Oh, of course yeah, not. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't already know what I'm doing tonight. So it, it, you know, it's I'm just an old hoops guy, and this is when the the best time of the world happens right here in the next month. You get into conference championships. You get into the you know NCAA tournament. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you go from the Daytona five hundred for me to March Madness. I'll take it. Oh God, JB, uh, I, you're gonna. Uh, we, I got was a great uh, non racing question but i know you got uh, another one here in line for brendan uh what, what about what uh, maybe we ask him all right <laughs> die hard or speed racer give, give me give me a topic well, which topic do you like yeah, more? please say speed racer because all these young guys just, don't know speed i was racer, just going to yeah. say i mean speed racer is is my era so i, oh, okay. I, Look, I mean, better yes. say some chim chim if i if yes. i don't I'll, I'll be upset with myself <laughs> okay i love them i love them i love die hard too <laughs> i love die i mean you know i'm a die hard guy but but speed racer i mean come on <laughs> love it okay mach 5 the legendary car from speed racer if you could legally take <laughs> any one of those enhancements from the Mach 5, the what do you think? The key word is legally. 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 Oh, legally. Right. legally.
well, taking a Mach 5 enhancement. Well, you know, the pogo stick always was a good one. I mean, to be able to... Nice. to <laughs> but the problem is I don't see much of a use for it. Like, I don't know where it would be useful because we're never beating and banging like that. Wouldn't you like to, like, like jump over jump over, the, you know, <laughs> jump over, you know, I wouldn't mind that. Just jump to right me, over. see, to me, I would, rather, I would rather have, like, the wheels and things that came out because I'd use them... I'd use them more like Racer X would have in trying to rip a few wheels out. I mean, oh, you know, listen, I just want, oh, I just want, I just I want it. to win. I don't, I don't want to jump over somebody. I don't want to make sure and take them out when you do it. Make sure they don't get there. Uh, I love it. it. Listen, if you're not rooting for Brendan tomorrow night, then you're not living. I can tell you that right now. You don't have to root for Georgetown tonight. Yes, you do. Okay, maybe you do. But Brendan, <laughs> thank you so much himself, guys, for your time. Love appreciate it. Love it. Love it. Best of luck. Thanks, man. Have fun. Night. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Brendan, go. Uh, yeah. He said it, and I, I said it, and he agreed. Listen, this is a throwback, uh, throwback racer. Uh, you know, I love that we finally got a speed racer fan in here. I love it. Racer X references, talking about the pogo stick and jumping over people. I, I love it. Fantastic. We have a great <laughs> scene here. Isn't it electric here right now? I mean, this everybody's is uh, good stuff. What are we looking at here? It looks like Chase Elliott uh, on the shot there. He's one of those, uh, I don't know, he's still a young gun, but uh, Chase Elliott, he's going to join us here shortly, by the way. He's uh, he ran well the other day, JB, in qualifying. He's one of those Hendrick Motorsports guys, and uh, he's got the uh, name Elliott. He's got pressure on him. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask him about that. Is if he gets to be Chase Elliott yet, or if he's still Bill Elliott's son, the great Bill Elliott, NASCAR legend. But uh, Chase is he's made a name for himself. He's he can be Chase now at this point. He's got uh, wins under his belt. Um, he was in the playoffs last year, and of course he's got the Hendrick resources behind him, so he's poised for a good year. I don't I think he crashed last year in the Daytona 500. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, everybody crashed, I think, last year, but uh, I think he would uh, would fare well if he gets into position. Uh, Absolutely, he, one of those names that could be. He won. Well, he won one of his mix. qualifying races uh, and sat on row one uh, before in the Daytona 500. So. Uh, he's got the car and the driving ability to, to do it. Can he do it for the 500 miles? That's uh, going to be interesting to see this weekend. The great American race comes down to so many factors, and one of them is whether or not you're there at the end. I mean, that's probably the chief factor, is whether or not you're there at the end. And But he, he's one of those, yeah. ra those racers in the building today that if, that if he's there, if he's in the mix in the final final 50 laps or so, he's going to be heard, dangerous. Uh, dangerous. We, when we had Martin Truex uh, Jr. here, he said, and he, I, I kind of – baited him into it but he agreed he said yeah to, to, to get to the to win you got to get to the finish and uh i think that's a pretty good uh sentiment here at, at daytona and, and really the restrictor play tracks and here's the man chase elliott hey, joining right. us here and uh we've been talking we had william uh Byron here a short while ago and i asked him uh anything new with you lately and he said uh he's still feeling good about that lap he ran the other day as all of you should be from uh from hendrick so what are your thoughts as a team having that great Sunday now leading you into Thursday night? Yeah, well, I just look forward to getting to the race. You know, we've been fortunate to have a good, a good qualifying effort down here and a good dual night, um, but never have had a good Sunday. So that's the big goal for us, and you know, hopefully we can do that this year. I know it, Daytona 500, it's, you can be running the best you're doing. You know, you, you're in the right spots. Your team is on, and then something goes wrong. It has nothing to do with you, and you're out. Yeah. Uh, is there how much luck you think is involved in winning the Daytona 500? A lot, yeah, a lot. Any, anytime something's out of your hands, I guess you would call that luck. Um, so I'm not sure how you draw it up or what you do or how you be perfect um, down here. It's very difficult. So you put yourself in the best position you think is right, and when it's the right time uh, to make a move, you try to do it. And hopefully, we're around at the end of this thing to have that chance. You know, racing with, with, with Jimmy Johnson, you know, let's call him a Hall of Famer. Um, and then it, you're the next old guy out there. <laughs> what do you, where are you on this team, you think, as far as, as uh, being someone that's looked up to and how much you're trying to soak in maybe from the veteran? And yeah. you got two guys under you who, who are also looking at you. Well, I'd say Jimmy's probably the best to ever do this ever. So certainly think he's well above um, any of the rest of us at HMS and I kind of view the rest of us the same you know I think we all kind of came from uh, well William and I came from similar short track stuff he didn't do as much of it as I did he he did a really good job in a short period of time and, and made it quick uh, Alex came from some open wheel stuff and had success that way so you know, the rest of us I feel like you know have all uh, 
all been lucky to be where we're at, and, and I don't really think we're, uh, you know, we're a whole lot different from one another. You got, uh, was it two wins last season, correct? Am I right on that? Uh, yeah. Two victories, okay. Yeah. Uh, what does that do to your confidence? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good. You know, appreciate uh, you know, the fast cars, you know, first and foremost. It was nice to be able to get to victory lane and build some confidence and, and uh, you know, get over the hump. It was uh, an unfortunate road on a few circumstances to get there, so I look forward to uh, I uh, look forward to getting the year started and trying to win some more and, and win often. And, and Hendrick itself, I mean, you guys had ups and downs last year. What was the mindset over the winter getting us to now where we are this week what, and, and, and the plans for the teams? I mean, are, do changes have to be made? Is it just a case of, you know what, we were unlucky? That's tough. I mean, I don't know. So we haven't run anything, obviously. Yeah, we, we, haven't, have, we haven't done anything yet. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll kind of let the race speak for itself on Sunday when it rolls around. and. And we'll see where uh, you know where we all stack up on on uh, on race day, and then certainly once we get to Atlanta and get on down the road, you know I think once we get back after the West Coast swing, that'll be a good example of where you stack up and how much work you have to do. I remember when you first started, we were we were really big on the on the Bill Elliott thing. Yeah, what do you know from Dad? How much do you talk to Dad? And I, now that you're a few years into this. Uh, are you, do you get to just be Chase Elliott now at this yeah. point, or, or do you still kind of lean on him a little bit, or does he kind of say, "Listen, you got to be yourself right now"? Yeah, I feel like he's always kind of had that that approach. Um, so yeah, I feel like uh, you know I've been doing this still long enough now, where either you, you figure it out or you don't. You know, right. and if you do, you, you belong, and if you don't, you don't. So um, I try to continue to to learn and try to do my part, and hopefully, I can establish a. A place here that I belong and, and uh, you know build some success and earn my place to stick around for a while. All right, well, Chase JB has uh, one quest quick question here for you. And, and JB, I don't know if uh, Chase knows who's a uh, speed racer. Is. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's probably, his dad might know, but the old guys are love speed racer. The the younger guys are like, what are you let's, talking about? Let's, let's <laughs> stay on the cartoon question. Okay, let's All go right. cartoon. I love the I love the cartoon <laughs> question. Some offbeat questions from from online, Chase. If you were if you were a cart what cartoon character best exemplifies your racing style? Pick any cartoon character, your favorite, that I, thinks, sums you up. I have no idea. Uh, I was a character in, in Cars, uh, the Cars Oh, that's movie, right, that's so. right, you were. Yeah, we'll go with that. Ooh, Love it. Love you know, uh, Bubba Wallace said he and his girlfriend were watching the film, first time, in the movies with everybody else, and he said he caught an editing mistake. Ah. He said no, they were flip-flop of voice. Did you, how did you, what was your review of the film when you... Heard yourself. I, I thought it was fine. Yeah, I, I only had like a half a sentence, so it wasn't like I half had a, whole a lot sentence. To mess up. You're not getting residuals for half a sentence no, for I the rest of your life. I don't know about that one. Chase <laughs> right. Elliott, thank you very much for your time thank and you. best of luck sure. uh, tomorrow night and this weekend, obviously, in the Daytona 500. Chase Elliott joining us uh, on Countdown to Daytona. Thank you very much for your time today on uh, Daytona 500 Media Day. Uh, good stuff from the Hendrick team that we've. Uh, had a chance to speak to a few of these uh, gentlemen now, and, and you heard uh, Chase mention, or we talked, uh, JB, about uh, Jimmy Johnson. Chase calls him probably the greatest driver to ever drive, and, and uh, I would be hard-pressed right to find here, an Dan. argument. He's going to join us here shortly. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know if we can say enough about Jimmy Johnson, what he's accomplished. Uh, seven uh, series championships. He's a Daytona 500 champion. And uh, this is a guy who's, you know, he's at a different spot in his career than a Chase Elliott or a William Byron. And uh, he's leading it. He's leading this team by example. I'm going to ask him about that uh, because Hendrick, the Hendrick team, uh, regarded as one of the best in the business. And, and to be the leader of that team, that's got to be pressure. Yeah. I mean, we're almost getting, you know, it was, there's a, a parallel. I, w I just got back from the Super Bowl. I was at the Super Bowl in Atlanta. <laughs> and, the, and the parallel for me is Tom is like Tom Brady now. We're getting to that point now. He can just keep going for really as long as he wants to. Yeah. Kind of like Brady, you know, he just keeps once he doesn't want to hang it up. And just a matter of uh, people asking, you know, uh, is Jimmy Johnson? Uh, should we ask him he, that? Should we, should we ask him if, who's going to who's going to bow first? Who's going to retire first? Who will Brady? go first, Brady or Jimmy? Yeah, I yeah. want to <laughs> ask him that question. I want to ask him that question. <laughs> so we'll start you get, that you way. get to have all the fun. I'll ask him that great. one. Oh, you're going to okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> I, I love that. I can't wait for that. So speaking of the man of the hour, uh, having a seat with us here on Countdown to Daytona, Jimmy Johnson. Thank you for joining us here on uh, Media Day. I know it's a busy time for you guys, but uh, this has been a busy week. 
for you so far. You ran very well in the qualifier. You make a move, you get the win in the clash. So where are you right now as, as we're in the night before the, uh, the dual races? We're trying to learn um, from, from the last week of being on the track. Um, you know, there's a lot of new things going on with the 48 team specifically. The new crew chief got some new faces on the team. Um, so there's, there's just a lot going on and we're just trying to get in that rhythm um, and, and be a, a mature, um, well-oiled machine right now, or team, I should say. Um, so we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. A lot of confidence comes off of a win and we're able to do that in the clack. So uh, you know, we're ready to go racing again. You, last season, I don't know, you were resilient. Uh, last Thank season, you. you guys had ups and downs. Um, it could, in, in, I, was, I would think that a lesser team would have gone in a different direction. You guys hung in there and were competitive. Um, coming in, I, I remember a comment you made in the post race the other day. Uh, I haven't gone anywhere, guys. And so, is there maybe you have a chip on your shoulder of all everything you've accomplished? But you know what, 2019 is. I need to show these people something. I haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting world we live in. Um, you know, everybody. Um, can share their opinions way easier than, than ever before with mm -hmm. the invention of social media. Um, you know, so there's, there's you know, there, there's, there are times there are things that, that uh, you know, just unfairly put on anyone and people thinking that a tough year for myself last year was a sign of me not, not being interested in the sport or maybe wanting to retire or whatever, whatever stories they wanted to make up just, just weren't true. So, um, you know, I guess I, I'm not really out to prove anything but I'm happy if um, people can finally see the truth through uh, through actions I make on the track and my commitment to this team you know the way I carry carry myself and take care of business as a professional professional athlete at this stage of your career you've got young men underneath you they may not just they may not come to you and ask questions directly daily or whenever however you guys communicate but they watch what you do how important is that role and is there pressure in that role on your team being the guy that everybody's looking to to, to soak in yeah there's a ton of pressure and I, I remember not long ago I was a young guy looking up at Jeff Gordon and other teams I had other um, championship level drivers to look up to and learn from so I'm, I'm happy to be in that role I truly enjoy helping people and helping others um, it's funny you mentioned my teammates um, and it's, it's crazy how my actions teach others and it's probably most noticeable in being a father um, to see my kids and uh, lead by example to them. You know, there, there's a kind of hourly reminder, a daily reminder that <laughs> you, you've got to lead by example with your children. Yeah. That was a, a quick massage. That's a free one uh, from Alex yeah. Bowman there. The quick, quick shoulder squeeze. Uh, JB here, uh, Jimmy, has some, some tough questions for you here. Perfect. Because this is, this is where we really earn our, our paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see here. Hold on as I, as I switch to the correct, the correct view here. Okay, there we go. Hey, Jimmy. All right. So, familiar with Speed Racer? Speed Racer, the legendary Ooh, cartoon? Yeah. All right. You don't, do you remember all the mechanisms that car had? Some. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you could steal one, is there one that you would steal? I'm the only one. remembering one right now. Isn't there Which like is, a buzzsaw wheel the buzz that came saw. out? We haven't heard that one today. That yes, We had a uh, pogo stick from Brendan Gohn who said, <laughs> I think, no, he didn't want to leapfrog you. He wanted to leapfrog Truex <laughs> on the pogo stick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, the, the buzzsaw one was great because any obstacle that came onto the track, Speed Racer could just buzz his way through it. Yep. I think it'd be a little bit illegal to do that here at Daytona. But all right, They would catch that in the post I think, they, I think yeah. they would probably catch that yeah, in the uh, all right, so then the, I just got back. So I just got back from from the Super Bowl. I was at the Super Bowl in Atlanta. You are a you are a legend in your sport, similar to how Tom Brady is a legend in his sport. So my question for you is this: <laughs> Who who goes on longer, Jimmy Johnson here at NASCAR or Tom Brady in the NFL? What's your what's your? I say what, they switch places. <laughs> switch places. Switch places. Can you run Jimmy, Belichick's <laughs> offense? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Could you could you run a Patriots uh, scheme there? No, stick and ball sports have not been my my sweet spot either. So <laughs> I, I think the Patriots would lose and lose often. Um, <laughs> not from a, a ten year standpoint, I don't know. We've kind of started at the same time and have a similar path and and been doing it about the same amount of time so i do think i'm a year or two older than him um but i don't know we've kind of been on a similar journey 
You have. The, the TB12 and JJ48 have been out I love on it. a... I love there's it. There's like a parallel there, there isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Never, really never stop, Jimmy. Never stop. I well, appreciate your it. Hand. Thank I'm going to wish you the best tomorrow night and this weekend as well. And uh, looking forward to a big season from the team. You guys laid it down on Sunday. Oh, thank you. They're talking about it now, if they weren't before. Yep. So it's on. It's going to be good. Jimmy Johnson joining us. Thank you very much you uh, for it. your thank time you today. On Daytona 500 Media Day, you're watching Countdown to Daytona. Jimmy, best of How luck to you. Off the next. Best of luck at the next station, yes. <laughs> as they say here on Media Day. And uh, how here, uh, we're getting close to time here, but we got Brad Keslowski joining us All here. All right, I got you saving the best for last here, or what? Who are you guys? I don't I know. Love you guys. It. We are countdown to Daytona, okay? We are nationwide, nationwide. We, are, we are being watched uh, on uh, any device you can imagine. Uh, uh, nationwide, tablet, like computer, ZZ top I don't, I don't have confirmation TVs, on this, but if they, everywhere. if they smart wanted to TVs watch us. Everywhere. But not on the dumb TVs, just, no, just the, the smart, smart TVs. Okay. International I, I, Space Station will be checking in shortly oh, really? with the Brad Keselowski <laughs> question. <laughs> I knew well I played. Played. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well played, sir. Oh, you, you guys go. got quite the setup here. You got three monitors going? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's show, Why let's three show. monitors? What's give, us, what? give them the wide shot. What's so important we have to have three monitors? I'd like to hear this. I need as much Brad on my screen. Runs, possible. Yeah. Uh, are you the stats guy? <laughs> no, I'm just the I'm just the video guy here. You're the video guy. Okay, I, so can, you... I can I can press all of these fancy buttons here, and I can <laughs> we can go here, or maybe we want to go here to Brad on the right side of the screen, or maybe we want to do this look here. I think all next, these different looks. I got this. Yes, next year, I want you to be the producer. So you I can go, I think take I'd camera like six. To do that. Yeah, yeah. Take camera six. Go. Yeah, I'm asking that question. Oh, no, what did you, you ask? blew it. You blew it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Brad, you know, you come here. You guys are dressed uh, nice, by the way. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. And I drive for Roger thank Penske, and he really appreciates day. people that, that they're dressed nice, so he'd like you guys. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, I'm, we, I'm we doing a hell of a job of hijacking your interview, too. We sir <laughs> you haven't asked a single question yet. No. Let, let me just keep going. Uh, well, what do you have for me? What do you have for me? Why don't you So how, how did you get in this role? How did I get into this yep. role? Yep. I don't want to tip my age. Okay. But uh, I was working. 32. I was working. Yeah, yeah, good man. I was working at Florida State University Okay. And for the Pat Kennedy show. He was the basketball coach in 19, 1992. Seminole man. Seminole, yeah. I see exactly. a are you a Seminole? No. No, no JB's not a Seminole. No, what are no. you? Uh, oh, man. You wouldn't know him. An Albany Great Dane. Great Dane. Great Dane. New York, Dane. Albany, <laughs> New York <man>. Wow. <laughs> that is a hell of a mascot. Big shout out to my Albany Great Danes. The here. Great Danes over there. Oh. Asking, asking. If you would have said, if if you, you, is that your chant? Did you guys bark? Yeah, uh, yeah it was something like that. Yeah, it was like, something like we oh, tried. How's the Great Dane bark? Is it like that? I, I don't, it's, it's close. You have to be loud at Albany to, to, <laughs> for people to hear. All you 10 of you? Man, I wanted to, <laughs> I, I've, lost a, I've lost a bet here because I, I was told <laughs> in somewhere in the hour we were going to hear a dog barking, and I said, no way. Not you a got chance. it. Uh, how about a kick stream? You, you want to come to my bus later? I give you a kick <laughs> stream too. <laughs> <laughs> A couple questions in there. I'm hungry. I'm tired. <laughs> exactly. Be quiet. Yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to use the potty. Do your homework. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I got a three-year-old, so we don't get homework yet. We, yeah, it's coming. We get a lot of daddy. It's coming. Will you play with me? It's coming. Yeah. Do you guys have kids? The homework's coming. You do not look like someone has kids. I'm you have way a, too much hair. I'm dealing with a 12-year-old uh, and his algebra. You have right just now. the right amount of hair to have a kid. Yeah, Yeah. well, yeah, the algebra yeah. makes it. There, there's a zero. ratio, kid to hair. I'll tell you this right now. When you get to that age, I will guarantee you, they will bring home a math problem, and mm -hmm. you're going to Google it because you won't know the answer. <laughs> well, shoot, I, I got a three-year-old, and I already Google questions she sends me. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I, I get the daddy, why? Why? I'm like, you know Google. what? I, Google. I never thought to ask why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. I, I think I've done a good job hijacking. Do you have any questions for me? I'm out. Uh, I, I don't even uh, know what we're doing. Uh, Albany. Is Albany like a school of journalism? Uh, uh, communication. Communication. Well, that's a very broad term. <laughs> I could do anything in this room, pretty you, much. You, you want to, you want the college to learn how to talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah before that, you were completely mute. You went to college, got a degree in talking. Now you're you. If you JB. want the truth, Brad, Brad, I, I went to college and I realized I wasn't good at anything except running my mouth. I could run three so, monitors. So now I just run my mouth three for a See, you want the college to go from good to great at running your mouth. That's it. Yes. That's what we do. So how do I find the next level of running my mouth? Let me go to college. In this crazy I need, industry. That we're I need $100,000 in. worth of college <laughs> debt to get from good to great in talking. And it took four years for me to realize that I, that's the only thing I was good at was running my mouth. So all been a great day. Well, and, Love it. and clicking and producing and all those whatever. I can't see what's we, on your monitors, but we, we are here. I we assume are. you do a lot of clicking. 
I do do a lot of clicking, and I can. We got can camera shots everywhere, bro. It's, it's oh, crazy. your touch yeah. screen? Yeah, he's Whoa. got everything. Oh, we need. It's crazy. Blew my mind. 2012 Series champion Brad Keselowski and, and uh, good runs here at Daytona. Yeah. Uh, real quick, they're, they're telling us we're done. Yep. So, <laughs> but give me there goes the give me your mindset here tomorrow night and then into the weekend. Tomorrow night, win the race. Sunday, win the race. Saturday, win the race. Uh, I've got three uh, three of the next four nights in the car racing, and uh, I think we got a shot to win all four of them. So, or three of them, three of the four that we're in, um, and ready to go. I tell you what, you do have you have a shot to host the show next year. Well, thank you very much. So uh, we'll try. We'll get. We'll get working I, on I, that. Quite honestly, I, no offense, I don't think it pays. Uh, <laughs> just, just my, Keep mama just, happy. That's your line. Guess, Keep mama you know, happy. That's I got the, kids to feed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, gentlemen, right. take care. Best of luck. Thanks, Jamie. The best interview, perhaps, in the history of sports. Brad Keselowski on Countdown to Daytona. You witnessed it right here. The, the best part, JB, is uh, we got. We didn't he do the interview. Us more questions. We did not do the interview. He did the interview. Him. And uh, that was good stuff for sure. Brad Keselowski, who's uh, Team Penske, teammate of Joey Logano, who was the uh, series champion last year, and uh, looks for, looking for another good run here at Daytona. So uh, that was uh, rarely are you speechless. Uh, we're kind of speechless right now. I, I went to good. Albany. I went to the University of Albany to run my to learn how to run my mouth, <laughs> and I'm speechless. So I don't know what to say. Brad Keselowski, uh, literally taking over the stream here for everybody. And so what are we? Uh, great, that's a great way to. Isn't that a great way to end it though? I too? think yeah, we're we're out of time, aren't we? Just, are we are we are just gone. about out of time, yeah, everybody. Yeah, if you are watching out there, we really hope that you enjoyed the show. It was so much fun to. to to produce it and, and, and be here and a big shout out to Dave Crowd who's been manning the camera here. I'm sorry here. that uh, we couldn't have Brad for like 35 minutes on that. That would have been uh, I just realized that I see I, I'm so distracted stuff. by Brad Kasasa's <laughs> interview. There's two Dans on screen right now. So <laughs> there you let's, go. Let's, let's go back Double to some, Dan. Daytona, some Daytona video. Double Dan. Well, but, you know, uh, as we as we wrap this up, JB, uh, I think we have some really nice, interesting conversations today. Uh, Martin Truex, uh, who said, you know, listen, he was dealing with a lot last year, but he has dealt with adversity. Uh, in his personal life and his racing life, he seems like he's in a really good place uh, heading into the Daytona 500 this weekend. And I got to tell you, if you're going to say, uh, "Give me a contender," it's so hard to pick a, a favorite in this race because there's intangibles. But uh, Martin Truex Jr., who's been in contention here before, might be a guy uh, to pay attention to uh, coming up here. Yeah, and the question is, who's going to claim this? Well, I do. You have any? Am I going to? If I had to go I, I one name. Gonna... I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot, Dan. I'm, I'm going to put world-famous Dan Lucas on the spot oh. here, buddy. And, uh, Are people you, recording you, this? Is this being recorded? Uh, so I, maybe. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. G give me a uh, name. Give, give me a name. I, I'm... I'm loyal to Truex for you know okay. I just I love the guy and uh, he's he's a he's a good driver and I think his team situation uh, is going to really ease his mind now. He's got to get to the finish line. How many times have we mentioned that in this show? Uh, I think Mark Truex is going to be a, a contender on Sunday. He might have a chance. I'm going to say it. Harley J. Earl, Martin Truex Jr. I believe that ghouls and ghosts <laughs> run this sport because, uh, especially with the Daytona 500, with it being so early in the season, anything can happen on race day. So when it comes to, to me making a pick or who I'm rooting for or whatever, I just, after Brad Keselowski hijacked our, our, <laughs> our show here, I'm, I, I'm going with Brad Keselowski, everybody. Mark my words, Brad Keselowski. Is this was, uh, we're going to, we'll work on the uh, copyright potential copyright infringements. It might be the Keselowski countdown uh, oh, next year. Love it. So Dan, yeah, Dan, JB, and Brad Keselowski on the show <laughs> just for the whole hour. Let's just we'll do it. That was fun. That <laughs> well, was I got to tell you, listen. Uh, if you checked us out today, we really appreciate you watching us. And uh, if you're a fan of NASCAR, fan of the Daytona 500, uh, you saw some big names uh, in the sport here. Big names in the history of this race, and uh, getting a good setup for for where people are heading into a big. Qualifying races tomorrow night. Dual qualifiers Thursday to set the field for the Great American Race on Sunday. So, uh, JB, is that about it? Uh, I think that's about it. And if you've been following all of the webisodes that we've been having over the course of the last couple of weeks, the Countdown to Daytona webisodes, and, and you tuned in to, to be here with, with Dan and myself today, we really appreciate you watching. We hope that you had a little bit of fun. Feel free to use the Countdown to Daytona hashtag because we're going to be doing more shows here from Daytona over the course of the week. Uh, Dan is going to be hosting those shows as we get ready for race day on, on Sunday. So, Dan... Uh, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, as I call him. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Lucas himself. Dan, it was an absolute pleasure. And to everybody else out there watching, I uh, really hope that you had a good time. All right, JB. Thanks a lot. And thank you all for watching. Uh, enjoy the race Sunday, everybody.